um, probably thought that when Elaine Aitken and I came to see him and said, we're you thinking of doing a mural inside this tunnel, he probably thought we were away with the fairies. Um, maybe we are. <laughs> I, I can live it's with that right. concept. Um, but what we said at the time was we wanted to create Scotland's longest heritage mural and we're 60% of the way to doing that. Another introduction on my right is our lead artist, Chris Rutterford, who is behind the design concept and a great deal of the hands-on paintwork that's been done here inside the tunnel. So, two years ago, that was a conversation with Donald. Fast forward to June this year, not very long ago, when we'd raised some money, we'd appointed the team led by Chris, we'd had great help from City of Edinburgh Council, because they did all this good new lighting in the tunnel. That transformed it in the first place. We've also had lots and lots of help from community groups, Tiffereth, Water Relief Conservation Trust, Sam H at Red Hall Gardens, Boromir Rugby Club, just to name a few. Gentleman standing over there with an orange jacket, Kenny, has great masonry painted uh, like a man possessed. <laughs> and, Basically, what we have done is to scrape, wire brush, scrape again, and brush again the entire length of this tunnel. It's 140 meters of it, and we've painted very nearly 70. On the walls, on the wooden panels, you'll see the work of nearly 400 school children. Um, Chris and his team have been in three schools, two primaries, one high school, and created over 180 square meters of stunning, imaginative images. We've had donations from over 120 local people. From the there he is. Here is one. Thank you very much. From the Armed Forces Covenant Trust, from Sustrans, and we've got Cosmo there from Sustrans who is in charge of their Art Roots Fund, and many other smaller awards that have helped us to get where we are. We're about halfway to our target of 100,000 pounds, and we've done more than half the work. So in terms of efficiency, we're doing quite well as we go. You might have been, if you've not been down to the tunnel before, wondering what the strange words are on the wall behind you. Those strange words are 16 lines, oh sorry, they're eight of the 16 lines of a Robert Louis Stevenson poem that was written in about 1885, called From a Railway Carriage. And those words serve as a series of hooks. Think of it as a row of code hooks. And each line of the poem on that wall there is a hook for some of the images here. So, looking down the tunnel somewhat, you'll see here is a tramp who stands and gazes. You might just be able to see the tramp. You might be able to see the dog. <laughs> and this is the tramp. <laughs> he, that's, I think, possibly the biggest self-portrait that Chris has done. I don't know for sure. The best thing about it is that look around the tramp from the tunnel and now allowed the smell of weed when I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> If you hang about after we're finished, you'll see and hear the hearing bit is going to be the noisy part. About a hundred local school children coming through the tunnel reciting that poem. Um, we've done this to celebrate Robert Louis Stevenson Day, and it's delightful to have Jeremy Hodges with us, the editor of the RLS Society newsletter. Um, and this could be a new world record for reading an RLS poem aloud in a tunnel. I think you're pretty safe there. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> it's a careful set of caveats. Just so you know, RLS was a local lad to some extent. His granddad was Collington's minister for about 30 years. And he played here, he grew up here. When he was young, the railway tunnel wouldn't have been built. But when he was in his 20s, the railway tunnel would have been built. It would have been open. We can't say for sure whether he ever travelled on the Berlino branch line. I would suspect it's a better than even chance that he did. So the story that you will read on that wall, the story you'll hear from school children, describes a young person's excitement at coming on a steam train out of the city, into the country, passing the mills, the water on the and all the sights that we get. And this line 
became known as the picnic line because so many people from the middle of Edinburgh found it a great way to discover the country and to have a picnic out here. So, I've talked far too much. Today is International Robert Louis Stevenson Day. It's celebrating his birthday, which was in 1850, so it's nice to know he's slightly older than I am. Um, what we have behind us is uh, a wonderful portrait that Chris has been fixing onto the wall this morning, having been completing last night. And what I'd like to do is ask Councillor Donald Wilson, as the person who said yes, you can paint in our tunnel, <laughs> and his team of council officers have given us some tremendous support. Uh, I'd like to ask Donald to say a few words and uh, unveil it. Oh. You said largely what I was going to say, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but I want to just take up, you, came, you said you came to me and uh, uh, told me, and I must have thought you were crazy. Well, uh, you did come to me, but uh, and to start with, I did think you were crazy, but uh, uh, you quickly sold me on the vision, and I have no idea what angle to come at this from, because there are so many angles. Um, but what appealed to me was the fact it's not just a, a creative, visual um, a piece of art, uh, but the community involvement and uh, uh, the schools, the armed forces, the, the local community all coming together and, and having a hand in it. And I'm very clear in my own mind that that is the way you do something like this. And uh, because it's the only way that we're sustainable and where it will last and where it can go forward. But the, the, there's a the huge visual impact of this, but there's the story behind it and you know, without getting all starry eyed about Edinburgh being the first city of literature and uh, having created the concept of a city of literature and this being Robert Louis Stevenson today. I mean, there's so, so many angles to this uh, that it's just amazing and it makes it real for people and it takes it into the local community and it's, as well as being a journey that has been the journey of the project and of course this uh, represents the journey. So um, uh, I love this project. It's the first time I've been here to, to see it and uh, I had no difficulty visualising it though, because the way it was described to me was so cool uh, that I could see straight away that this was a very fantastic thing to be involved with. So I'm very proud uh, to be involved uh, with it and to have supported this project uh, right from the beginning. It's going to be fantastic for many, many years to come. Uh, and so I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, uh, so it's a shame that it's the first time I'm, I'm keen to see it. And I did, I think, promise that I was going to run through it, but uh, uh, I have been running. I <laughs> haven't been running as much as I should have been, but uh, as soon as I get started again, I'll be straight through here. And, uh, and it's actually quite near to where I live, so to have this uh, 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 so near at hand is, is a fantastic facility. It turned something that was an issue, that was a problem, that was dark, and uh, that was. Uh, it wasn't welcoming into something that's a real huge community asset, something really huge for the whole area. So, well done. Thank you. Thanks very much. Right. Well, I'm going to leave Chris to tell you how this comes off, because I don't know. Uh, brute force and stupidity. Okay. <laughs> I think we can just get a great talk and shoot Brick. I've invented this this morning. Is it working? There you go. So it's uh, Robert Lee Stevenson, obviously over here, his each of groups and gone forever. We're trying to get a bit of a reflection. Um, and, but, um, there's a lot of the areas of the poem have got a lot of looping in them. We have uh, areas that are called school kids, and you'll be in front of them for a long time. But what we want to do is uh, have a lot of his works actually up there, so people will hopefully get sucked in and they'll be looking at it and kind of thinking, you know what, I might actually go home and read Treasure Island again. And, um, you know, the swim, obviously, the swim that that was written about is in the, the church, still fastened to the elm tree up there. And uh, um, a lot of this poetry. So, uh, there you go. So the, we, what we wanted when we first, when Kenny and I and the boys, uh, first masonry painted this, as Mike said, this was this was grim in the extreme. It was dark, it was gloomy, it was actually this colour of yellow, but like, you know, sodium yellow. And um, it just looked like a, a goblin's cave. And um, but as soon as we masonry painted this, it looked like the sun had been turned on. 
and both ends of the tunnel will be suffused in that yellow and it'll be warm and welcoming. And then as you travel through, you'll go right the way through the colour palette and it'll be like a, a whole a journey through a day, which is very much what the, the home is like. So um, it's my favourite part of the mural, that black spot permanently. <laughs> Buccaneer Black. So Eddie, the art director, says that there used to be black spotting. I had no idea. But um, in a way, permanent ink. Uh, Robert Louis Stevenson died in 1894. Yes. So uh, permanent ink indeed, 100, 175 years ago now. He's still going strong. No. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Greyburn School, which is the first school to arrive. Uh, they're largely in wheelchairs, so they're in the car park at the far end. They're going to be setting off, followed by Benali, Collington and Fairhill, not necessarily in that order. Donald, thank you very much for coming and unveiling this this morning. Really appreciate it. We really appreciate your support and all the council officers' support. And thank you all for coming along today. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you.